Let's, let me watch this really quick. It's this nine minute video, right? This this deep dive Legends of the Veil. Is that what I need to be watching? All right, chat. He's not in Discord, so I'm gonna watch, and then we'll uh, we'll hash it out. All right, we'll hash it out. Let me watch this video. All right, let me watch this video. All right, so there's a tornado someone's talking about. The Legend of the Veil vale is a brand new voyage that is exclusive to Pirate Legends, and it's this hybrid between the best bits of Tall Tales, the music, the voiceovers, the characters, the storyline, and then it's the best part of Voyages as well. It's the kind of infinite replayability and all the randomness of visiting all these different islands and puzzles around the world. There are lots of different things that you can do, such as exploring lost shipwrecks, fighting alongside ancients against phantoms. And I think the nicest part of it is that you don't all have to be Pirate Legends to embark upon it. We have over a million Pirate Legends in the game now, so you can go and seek someone out and maybe embark on that adventure with someone you've never met before. And this is one of the really strong elements of CFEs where you get an experienced player bringing on a less experienced player and showing them this whole new world in front of them which they wouldn't have otherwise been able to see. So you start off with the usual where you place the quest down and then we all join in. You get the lovely banners and this time around we actually have a new theme for the ancients where we created something that's slightly ambiguous in tone where it's, you're not quite sure where it's major, minor, and then it goes into a little major tone because the ancients are on the side of the pirate lord. And when you start off the quest, you meet the pirate lords and you're helping him to uncover the gems that belong to the Veil of the Ancients mask. And each chapter will uncover a new gem that you can place into this mask that then kicks off a new cutscene with the Pirate Lords. And you really feel like you're getting to know the Pirate Lord more during this quest as well. So in the voyage, we have multiple modules that every time you play one, will kind of shuffle them up and give you a different selection of them. So every time you play, you get a new experience and there's a ton of different gameplay types within each of those modules. The quest itself is structured into like three chapters and the ending is always the same. We wanted that to be this huge kind of cinematic set piece at the end, but the first two chapters are interchangeable. Um, we wanted some based around combat and some based around puzzles. We have three specific quests based around solving maps. One of the big differences here with the Pirate Legends is they really know the world well. And so the basic X marks the spot maps are less challenging to them. So we wanted to mix that up a little bit. I mean, I don't know where any X marks and spots are. For this. Only people who know the game really well will be able to tell even what the island is. Because normally when you get an island, you can check it out on the map. But these are like a really zoomed in little section of it. Pirate Legends are the dedicated players who will understand. Oh, oh yeah, I can that little bit of that island. Oh yeah, I know that. The second is uh, pictorial maps, where players will get to see images drawn by studs of the islands in the Sea of Thieves. They will have to then depict those images and try and find out which island that's on and then once they find that out specifically where the treasure is hidden. We have this thing that internally we're calling the lying maps which is where uh, our old friend Suds has kind of recorded all of the ancient uh, drawings and symbols on the island but has noticed that he's got one of them wrong and maybe it's up to the players to figure out which one he's got wrong or why the ancients got that wrong and maybe there's some treasure buried there. Okay. All right, so they have a new structure with pictures, and then they have like two different styles. I'm on board with that. The thing that I do like so far, which I thought that they missed on the adventure, is on the adventures, they showed these trailers, right? Like, um, they showed like Bell and like the Pirate Lord, and they had all these trailers on social media. But when you got into the actual adventure in the game, you didn't get that like cutscene in game cinematic. And I said that right off the bat. So I like that they're doing that. I think that's better. It gives you something to like kind of like, you know, it gives you something to kind of like amp you up a little bit, get you going. All right, let's keep going into it. So another one of our gameplay experiences involves players diving deep beneath the waves and searching the shipwreck graveyard. So there's kind of this cluster of all these different wrecks and they're all orientated at different angles. And it can be a little bit disorientating at first, but there's a number of different wrecks and they've got all these kind of interesting mechanisms inside them that, that hide away these secret compartments on the ships. We get to use like the wreckage pieces and the dying lights flickering to breadcrumb you through the scene and then you've got to avoid sharks and you're running out of air. So it's, it leads to this fast paced gameplay that's really- Why is everyone laughing? 
really exciting for the players. The player's objective is to retrieve the key and open the captain's cabin and find the Veil Stone and return it to their ship. But there's many shipwrecks and there's many kind of hidden treasures aboard all of those wrecks and all these kind of interactable mechanisms and compartments for players to use. So whether they choose to get the key immediately or whether they want to kind of collect all of these rewards, the choice is up to them. And then we have Haunted Islands, which is a spooky, mysterious yes. experience on some of our more beautiful islands in Sea of Thieves. So as you approach, the lighting will change. The mood kind of shifts to be more ghostly and eerie. Is this gas? Players will search the island and, and meet Belle, who will ask yes. the players help and aid them in finding another one of the Veil Stones, which is what you need to complete the voyage. So you've got these ghostly statues and Belle gives you a lantern to help you. Chad, there's too much gas in this game. Get the gas out! Every island is gas! You light them and find them, and these have like massive shockwaves that come off of them to kind of guide you towards which one to light. And once you get to the final one, you'll see like a ritual. There's the ancients, they're kind of doing this like ritual, bowing down to the statue and lighting it. Once you finally light that final statue, you end up in a fight with the phantoms, and the phantoms turn up. But what's nice about this one is the ancients also come to help you out. So you're not alone in the fight. Lore-wise, this pirate legend quest is really exciting. The ancients. The friendly were those were those friendly NPCs, oh. chat? Are these friendly NPCs fighting the uh, the phantoms? So you're not alone in the fight. Lore-wise, that's cool. I like that. I think that's a cool. Ad I think that's a cool addition. The game could use some stuff like that. I feel like this pirate legend quest is. Even if they had like ships that did that like merchant ships that were friendly then unless you attack them like helped you kill like ghost ships and stuff really exciting the ancients the civilization that was before the sea of thieves for the first time ever you get to meet them in spectral form you, you brought them back it's really exciting it's cool having people fighting with you but it's these are the ancients you know these are the things we've been talking about for years and years and you finally get to meet them so you have one part where you're fighting the Soul Flame Captain, where we've actually added a new layer of music, which is based off of the Soul Flame Captain, but there's a new boss Music's way. gonna be a music thumbs up without even hearing it. As we usually I know that. do, we put in the Sea of Thieves theme, but in that style of that music. So you'll hear that and hope for your blood. Did you get a hit marker on that? Hang on. As we usually do, we put in the Sea of Thieves theme, but in that style. Oh, they don't have UI on. <laughs> There's no HUD. Style of that music. So you'll hear that and hopefully your blood's gonna be pumping. Like, I'm ready to fight the last boss. You fought well. The third and final chapter of the Veil of the Ancients is always the same. It's always this huge epic encounter where players set and sail towards this tornado in the middle of the ocean and it's super dark and there's loads of rain and there's all these kind of phantom ghost ships around in this haunted fortress. We made a massive tornado that's got um, lightning bolts coming off of it. We got a final concept which was from the art director Ryan. We wanted to add like rocks to it. There's like subtle glows inside of the tornado itself to kind of show off that power coming out of it and just trying to make it different to the visual effects that we've done at that stature. It's so epic, it's huge, and I wanted to make that feel threatening without dominating the entire mix. So I focused more on the textures that I added in, this kind of cool warbling texture that feels like the sound barrier is ripping as the tornado spins. The thunder also sounds different if you're up close versus further away, more low and booming. I mean, that looks hard, sweet. Kind of feeling it in your chest. So that was one of the most rewarding but challenging parts to work on for this voyage, and I'm really excited to hear what players think of it. We bring this new level of destruction to the gameplay. And we've had destruction in the past in previous projects that we've delivered. So do you shoot the fort with your ship? But, but for this time, we've really upped the scale. It was a major effort between environment art, technical art, and visual effects to give the player satisfaction that they've actually destroyed the environment that they're playing in. I mean, and that's as cool. you destroy each one of the emplacements, um, the tornado will eventually disappear and you have this bigger, massive, huge emplacement that you get to destroy and turn into... So darkness. what is the tornado actually doing? Is it Does it move your ship? Does it throw it? Does it shoot you with a lightning bolt? Or is it just visual? Well, it was a huge technical achievement to bring all that together. The fact we need to be able to have six crews at once potentially doing this in the same world is challenging in and of itself. So the fact they're able to do that, have all that working, have it all working in such a performant way, it's very impressive. Cannonballs are flying everywhere, ghost ships are sailing through you, everyone's panicking. 
and the music sounds incredible and the lighting is atmospheric, it's an incredible moment to kind of end the voyage and where we give players a lot of the treasure and loot that they'll get for completing this voyage once they've destroyed the fort. There's also a brand new Pirate Legend cosmetics for players to get. We have a, a new Veil of the Ancient ship set, Veil of the Ancient weapons, and then a really cool Veil of the Ancients costume for players that can. Man, that's cool. Our new more Athena people are gonna like that. Of Thirty. So we've up, we've up the level cap from twenty to thirty. So there's a bunch of new progress for players to do when the quest launches. Haunted Forts at the end is the bit I'm most excited for people to play because I, I've been working on that, so I'm very excited and I think it's really cool. It's something that the community have always asked for and we're finally able to give it to them, so just being able to see their reactions and finally get what they asked for is really nice. It's great we finally be able to do it and really give it, really do it justice. It really does feel just like a completely new Voyage type that we've never added in to see of these before. I know our Pirate Legends have been waiting a long time for this exclusive content, but I believe the team has built something really special here and it'll be worth the wait. And they don't have to wait much longer now because it's coming out on April the 21st. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it as, a, you know, our community first. I don't know. I... <laughs> I think, I guess I'll have to, to see some other opinions, but I think that that looked pretty cool. I thought that looked pretty cool, chat. I think that it, I think what the game needed is more naval stuff. I guess it adds like naval, right? Yeah, I mean, I think that it's cool that it's like, it adds a bunch of different stuff. You're gonna know when they're at the end, which I guess is nice too. Right? Like, you're gonna have an idea of when they're done. I don't know, chat. It's one of those things where I'm gonna have to see how it works. I think that if you pull off... I think that if you... One, I think it's cool for people that are doing it. I don't know how long it's going to take. Two, if you want people to attack you, it might incentivize people to, like, maybe I'll do one. Three... Pulling off a tuck in that, I think, would be pretty impressive. So the only thing is that Nyx is that's tied to the rep increase. So like you have to that is the like that is the way. Unless people are just doing regular Athenas again. No, you have to tuck on their boat. You're not tucking on the fort. I mean, why I mean, there's no reason to do anything in the game in that with that logic, Nyx. There's not in any ways at all. Once you get to 30, you stop. Like that's just how games are that's how it is. What's the point of tucking? I mean, I don't know. Just the fun of it. I would have to... I don't really see... I like the fact that it's using all your game knowledge and naval. I think that's... I think that that is cool so far. And believe me, I would talk trash about that if I thought so. I'm not afraid to do that with this game. Like, I've got a good enough relationship with the devs. Like, I'll say what I don't... Like, I think the adventures need to be gone. I think the adventures are not good for the game at all. They need to be taken out or reworked. That looks cool to me, personally. Maybe not having a global tornado. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'd have to think about it. Maybe not having, like, a global tornado. I don't know if that's good for it. It kind of, like, diminishes the stealing of it. Right? If the tornado cannot be seen across the map, then I think that's okay. But if you can see that from everywhere, I don't think they're going to do that. Do we have any confirmation on that? We have no, like, actual confirmation. I think that's important. I think that's an important part of the puzzle. Let me, um... Let me go in there and see what's up. Let me do, uh... Alright, let me go see what he's thinking. Yo. Yo. What up? What's up, man? I just watched it. Oh, I know we're going to disagree on this, but we'll have a conversation. Okay. Why don't you start it off? Okay. Okay, but you already know that I have a problem with emissaries 
giving too much information and that just being kind of a stupid thing in the game, right? Gotcha. And then it just kind of gets doubled down here. It's like the beginning of the video is like, oh, okay, sweet. Okay, sweet. Oh, that's not bad. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I like the idea of the voyages. I like the idea of them being kind of tall, Taylor. I like the idea of them being random and across multiple islands, right? Right. <laughs> but then how does it end? A fort for the fucking 15,000th time, there's just a fort. Oh, what's different about it? Oh, it crumbles when you hit it with, with cannons. Oh, here's another thing. By the way, let's show the whole server again, just like everything else that it's happening with Big Tornado. I just, I hate that so much. So I was it, just it, thinking, I was thinking about you. I think a big piece of that is, is that tornado global or is that contained to like a very small area? I feel like that's a huge piece of information that could change my opinion uh, either way. I, I, I I've, have they been known for changing little numerals, brother? You know what I'm saying? Look uh, at the red tornado. How far you see that from? But that's designed as like a world event, so I don't know if they're like. You see, yeah, I, I, I actually but, don't yeah, know. Like, it, I'm not sure. Yeah, but when the uh, when they do the uh, the Pirates of the Caribbean, sh everyone sees that, and that's a triggered event. Well, you can't see that from across the map. So, like, for instance, okay. when you have... How, how many squares would you be able so, to see that from, though? So, like, when you do, for instance, there's one where you fight, like, Davy Jones or whatever. As, like, a... You remember mm -hmm. how the Flameheart Skull was in the sky? So, um, like... Um, yeah, I remember so like, him. Yeah, so, like, that happens with a Davy Jones head, but you cannot see that as a, a player on the map. Like, you can't see the crew that's doing that, but they can see it. Does that make sense? Okay, so there's a so, possibility. I mean, bro, I guarantee you're seeing it five blocks away. So I think that's a huge piece of information because if it's something you see from super far, I agree with you. I don't think that's good because then, you, like you said, it diminishes all of the pre-work on the tuck and you can just go in at the end. Mm -hmm. but, and then it ends with... Uh, it ends with fort, dude. How many forts are in this right, game? Right. But they, they I mean, just they, added a fort last update, which is multiple forts across the map. Am I wrong? Right. Up at all times. I just don't understand why the solution to everything is fort. I do like the destructibility thing. I think that's cool. I like that they use naval in the in it. I think that's cool. I think if you pull off a tuck with all that sh going on, it's gonna look awesome. Ugh, I don't know. I think the I think the biggest part we're missing here, which I wonder if the devs would even clarify that, like if I asked early, is is that tornado something that everyone sees, or is that like instance to the crew? Because I do know I mean, it can't just be instance to the crew. That doesn't make any sense. They would just I, have to change. They would just have to be range based, right? They've done it though with other things. What I'm saying, so I know it's possible. Hmm. Like you cannot see that like Davy Jones thing. Like you can see the the ships that are fighting and shit, but you cannot see his head in the sky unless you're on okay. the quest. So I think that's a huge question mark for that. And I think that would greatly okay. change my my that would sway me either way, I think. So if I don't you know. can see it from across the map, I'll just I'll hate it basically. I mean, I agree with that. I think it would be a little bit. I think people would be scared to do them. I think it would turn people away from doing it too because they're just gonna be like, "Well, why am I gonna do this when I'm just gonna get my ass beat?" You know what I'm saying? Uh huh. Yeah. So I mean, I, I think there's some variables here, but like you said, I think I think the thing how they do like the books. I think the underwater thing's cool. Like I think they're I think they have the right idea where you're not just like doing some random bullshit where like, ah, I dug up six chests, I got, now it's a fucking Athena's the next dig, like it's not, at least it's something new, right? But I think a big thing depends. It depends on the tornado, I agree. I think that's my hold back right now. I mean, yeah, Nix, I agree. Silent Smash, thank you for the Okay, you give me a little it. hope on it. I'll be honest, I just got done ripping it apart because I was fucking annoyed that it ended in a fort and that it had a big ass tornado. I could maybe. I was just like, that's just so stupid. I could maybe ask, honestly. I just hope that's not an over an overlook, and they were thinking what you're thinking when it's it being instanced. So, are you talking about the amount of players in this slot? I mean, I think that'd be cool too. Like, I I thought they should have done that because you do do that in like the Tall Tales Nix. There's like you go in and invade like a city. I think that would have been cool. I actually thought chat. I actually thought myself when I watched the first part of that. I thought once you blew up that first fort, 
and a tornado went away that you would invade the city and they ended up shooting it again. I thought it was going to be like you have to get on there and invade it. That's what I thought. But then it was shooting again, which is whatever. But even if this tornado thing is true, it still doesn't change the fact that they're still sh games about this, sh things about this game I, I hate. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm with you on that, dude. I honestly wish they would just take emissary tables completely away, but keep the emissaries themselves. That's fine. But just Ozzy. get rid of the information gathering to make every server just, hey, jump in, look for info, leave, jump in, look for info, leave. I feel like you should have to sail around for that info. So just let me let me devil's advocate, because I do okay. think that you're right there. How much would you enjoy it if you played like you did an eight hour stream and you literally only found one Athena? Yeah, but that's that's like it shouldn't be hand fed to you though. You know what I mean? You shouldn't know when an Athena's on that bitch. And not to mention, how many times do you think you leave a server before another guy gets into the server and starts one? And then you come across them twenty minutes later. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, absolutely. We're, we're in and out. We're in and out. We're in and out. You know what I mean? Yeah. But that's we're doing that because we have that information, you know? Right. No, I agree with that too. So we know exactly immediately when we get on a server who we're looking for, why we want to be on their ship. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. everything. It's just eh. I miss the good old days where we had to move around and got excited when we would find the ships that met like our criteria of possible Athena. You know what I mean? I just, yes. I just think everything being hand fed kind of sucks and has taken away a lot of the, from the game. Like we used to just go into a server and just go out. You know what I mean? Yeah. Now it's like hop, pop, 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 pop till we see something that looks like it'll be something. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So I would say I I do agree with that. Um, I think in the right environment that really is better. So like say when this gets raised to thirty, there's going to be a lot more people doing them. So we're going to find them. If they didn't have emissaries, we would find them basically, right? What do you mean? And then, so like when there's a when there's a cap that gets raised or it hasn't been capped for a while, mm -hmm. you're obviously going to find more because people are still like chasing that that grind. But okay. when, let's say we were let's say you came back to the game, you know, like you just did and there's barely anyone doing them. Mm -hmm. I bet you would you would play like a whole day and you would like hardly ever find them, if any. You like you could go yeah, a whole that's, stream and but not that's, find them. Anyway. That's also the that's also their fault for not having it be worth anything. So of course, I agree no with that too. I, I agree with that too. It should just be worth rep. It should be worth more stuff. And the rep that it's worth is really not that much considering its counterparts uh, all equivalent to it in you know in uh, uh, you know in uh, bulk. Agreed. 100% on that as well. So, so like, I mean, you're, that's, you're making that's the also point that them. needs to be made. Yeah, no, I agree with that 100%. You're right. Like, people want need to be wanting to do these other than just because you have to because you want to cap. Like, you should be wanting to do them anyway. Not no, to I'm mention, like, yeah. let me throw it out there that it's also a fucking thing that makes stream sniping very easy. Let me just throw that out true, there, too. True, true. Oh, someone just got on the server with two gold hoarders and, uh, and, yeah. uh, and a gold hoarder. One gold hoarder. Or two gold hoarders and one order souls. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Oh, let's, let's go jump around and meet that, you know? It would also be solved if there was way more ships on a server, so your potential to run into people doing things would be higher. Yeah, hey, bring back the fucking <laughs> six ships... Or, shit, I, dude, uh, I know they can't. I want ten, but like I know they probably can't tens do it for networking. Much, I think you tens, think I so? Think too much. I would, I would be satisfied with seven. I think. Yeah. Personally, at least it's try, more than try, right? one more than we've ever had. You know, so it's a good like attempt at a. Maybe their servers can't handle with all the PVE they've added though. You know what I mean? Right. No, I'm, I'm with you. Well, you've seen how shit gets with like a lot of uh, chess and their animations and. It's kind of weird. But yeah, it's like uh, the amount of ships, the amount of information that you have on each server. I just think, I think it's just all just fucking up the flow of more so on the servers. Because now people are just hopping, 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 looking for the people who are actually doing stuff when you shouldn't just be hopping that quick. You should True. be investing time into a server before you know if you should be going to the next one. You know what I'm yeah, saying? It, it does really... Like you said, and who knows how long it takes for like a server to refill if there's like two server hoppers that were on our mm -hmm. server. No, who I, knows I, when I, an Athena I'm got on five that. minutes after us, you know what I mean? And and started up and we didn't know till 20 minutes later and all of a sudden we have a tuck. It, it's all sorts of variables that are just completely yeah. out the window because just too much information.